I'm sitting here with Morgan Chegwood in from the city of San Angelo, and we're going to talk about parvovirus. So we know recently it's been a huge outbreak, and it put a stop to dog adoption. So it, how it has did. this affected the city? Sure. Um, we are very grateful for the rains that have been coming for the last few weeks, um, but it did cause a particularly stubborn strain of parvovirus that was lying dormant in the ground. We believe um, that these rains cause it to bubble up to the surface, and that's based on our research and what we're seeing across the community, as well as talking with our professionals and veterinarians and all of our partners. And so uh, what that means is, is this is a parvovirus like we've never seen before. We see adult dogs being struck, and, struck with it. Um, ordinarily, it's something we're really cautious about with puppies. We deal with... Um, you know, dogs under a year old, very specifically to try to prevent the spread of disease. Uh, but we're seeing this just across the gamut right now. So the disease is caused by rain. No, the disease lies dormant in the ground. It lives in the ground. It, it, it can be killed by sunshine or by treating um, the ground. But when these rains happened recently, that we had some really deep, saturating rains, um, if you have never seen parvo in your yard before, people are seeing it now uh, because it was super deep and it's bubbled up to the top now. And so dogs that were not vaccinated and had no vaccination history were contracting it, even if they were over a year old, uh, which is unusual. So it's normally seen in puppies. What is something that we can... If you have a dog at home, what are some of the things that they can see to know that they might, their dog might be affected by this? That, yeah, that's really what we want to share with folks today is to be aware. Um, one, double check with your veterinarian that your dogs are vaccinated for all the things that they recommend. Um, if your dog is a puppy, there's three rounds of shots you need to go through. If your dog is, is an adult, you just generally just need a booster every year. But if you have a dog that's particularly frail health or you're uncertain about the vaccination history, like if you've got an adult dog and you don't know whatever it's been through, just double check with your veterinarian to make sure that they're current and have everything um, that they recommend. So are the symptoms the same for puppies and adults? Right. So the symptoms that you'll start seeing, for example, if you're concerned that you have a pet at home that's not behaving themselves, um, first you'll see them that they're a little lethargic. So if you have a normally active dog that's starting to um, be um, just kind of lazy, lazing around, that's, that's kind of first onset of the disease. Um, you also may see vomiting as well as diarrhea, um, particularly um, bloody diarrhea or bloody vomit. That's really concerning. Um, also, if your dog is anemic, if you look at their gum line and it looks particularly pale instead of a healthy pink. Um, that's concerning as well. So if you see that your dog um, is showing any signs that, that are concerning to you along those lines, it could possibly be parvovirus. There are other things that your dog could get which are easily treatable. Either way, get into your veterinarian as soon as possible. Um, there are emergency vets in town as well if it's after hours. So October 14th, that's what we're trying to see as hopefully the dogs become healthy at Concha Valley Paws, the animal shelter, so that adoptions can start up again. That's the correct date, right? Right. That's what we're working through is on October 1st, we put a halt to dog adoptions just to prevent um, and the, a halt to intake um, because we were just seeing, uh, like I said, adult dogs come in with the disease and it was unmanageable. And so what we're encouraging folks is if your dog is stray um, and, and, and a good Samaritan brings it in my shelter, that's not the best thing for your dog right now. So if, unless a dog's aggressive, we're not bringing it in the shelter. Um, and so we're going to reassess on October 14th based on the epidemiology of the disease. It should have run its course by then. Um, but with these continued rains that we continue to be grateful for, by, by all means, uh, we are just making sure that we can stay on top of it and manage what's coming in the shelter and what's going on in the community. So as a community, what can we all do? I know you were saying that we have to fundraise or... So we have had a tremendous show of support from our donors um, to help treat. We are treating a, you know dozens of dogs right now. In the past, we would not have had the funds available to do that and so we are just so grateful for those that have stepped forward in that way and if you have ever considered donating um, to the city or to Contra Valley Paws or um, fostering that is a really terrific way to um, prevent further deaths from this disease. Well Morgan thank you so much for joining us I appreciate you coming to tell us all about how we as a city can help get this virus out because we all want our dogs to be healthy of course so if you guys want to adopt a dog hopefully by October 14th you can do that.